Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 56. And today we're going to look at the login class. And specifically, I got the little uh, indicator here that we're actually looking at a boilerplate. And what I mean is, we've got some generalized code here that you can pretty much take and do anything with it that you want to. So, depending on the system that you're working with, you can actually take this code and reconfigure it. So, it's meant to be worked with, played around with, hacked, or whatever you might uh, do to it. So what I'm going to do in this particular lesson, I'm going to take the users class and the sessions class, and I'm going to put them all together and create a logins class. And so I'm going to get a session logging system. Specifically, this is designed to run in Adobe Flash Builder, but you can use this for any system. Just modify the code as you would. Now, don't worry. The code's going to get kind of long. We're going to write 255 lines of code today, but typically PHP classes can be thousands of lines of code all strung together like spaghetti code. So no problem with having long code in PHP. Uh, also, I want to make a point is the reason we need a PHP login class is you don't want to ever embed passwords in Flash Builder because there's simple programs out there that can decompile those passwords and you can read those right out of Flash or right out of Flash Builder. So don't put the passwords in your code because people can see them. I want to make one more point too. For Flash Builder, the ideas of super global such as session become somewhat fady. I mean, at PHP, we know how they work. We know they're secure. But Flash Builder is a very new program. So when I start using sessions in... Uh, Flash Builder, it, they may have a different meeting or kind of a kind of a change. For example, in PHP, I'll use a session to see if I'm logged in to test which page I can go to and if I'm allowed to go to that page. Uh, if the session's active, I can go to any page. If not, it'll check and I can't go there. But in Flash Builder, I might change a state using a session. But then again, I have the question, well, in Flash Builder, I can also decompile and look at the code where in PHP, I wouldn't be able to decompile and see what's happening. So uh, what those meanings are, uh, though people say it's secure, it's safe. You know, when something's new, you've got to uh, you know, put some holes in there or see where the vulnerabilities are, and that's yet to be done with uh, the newest uh, software such as Flash Builder. So once again, just a little bit of caution there as you begin to write programs and use concepts like sessions or super globals or whatever you want to use, that it's new and it may seem to work the same way, but watch out because things can bite you and come back around and get you. So I'm not saying that to discourage you in any way, but just be aware as I give you the code that you need to be aware of that possible vulnerability and check it out for yourself if we actually release something on the web. But let's go ahead and take a look at the class. So I'm in uh, PHP Eclipse, and in Lesson 56 is a login class, and there's my login.php, and there's my config file that goes along with it. And this class is extremely easy to write and hopefully easy to understand. Typically, you've got your config that you're bringing in, and we're going to call this class login, and a variable here called login, which we're going to set to false, and a user ID. Now, that login basically is a private variable and it's going to stay private because we only want it to be changed within this class. We don't want anything to come down from a super class or a class above it and actually change it. And as we go down a little bit, we see we bring our variables in just as we would do in the constructor to get the connection to the database going. And we have a number of functions. And one new function is found user. And uh, what the found user is going to do is going to bring in an array with a name, a username and a password. And I'm going to actually going to uh, trim that password and trim that username so that if there's any spaces, you know, every once in a while someone's typing in, they hit a space bar accidentally before or after. So I trim it so the, the back or front uh, spaces are removed so I get nothing but the password. And once again, I'm going to use my real escape uh, to actually uh, get rid of any special characters uh, that might be in that string, such as a quote, that would cause me a SQL injection. So you want to avoid any trouble spots by using that uh, escape uh, method right there. And once I've done that, I'm just going to recreate the array, call it my array check, and send it into my authenticate method. And that's the same authenticate method that we've seen before. So let's go ahead and just hit my control key and go right to the authenticate method. And what the authenticate method is going to do at this point is going to take my username and it's going to encode my password. So once again, I'm comparing encoded passwords to encoded passwords. And it's going to write to my database and say, hey, uh, let's search the user's table. And is my username there? And is my password there? And limit one means just look at the first set, the first record set, which would be the record 01 or ID 1. And when it looks at that, if it's there, then, uh, you know, if it finds it, then you've actually got a connection. And so this shift array, what it actually does, it brings back one, actually it returns a one, showing that you have indeed uh, made a connection or found uh, your name in the database table and found a, a matching username and hashed password in your record set. And once that is done and uh, authentication has occurred, it's going to basically have three conditions that you're going to look at. If you are authenticated and if you have already logged in, 
then there's no reason to log in again. So we'll say you're already logged in. If you are authenticated and you're not logged in, they're actually going to run their login method. And finally, if you're not authenticated, it's going to go user not found, try a new password. So uh, if you are not logged in, but the, you are authenticated, that's basically the password and username is matched, then you're going to run the login method. Let's take a look at that. And then the login method, basically you're just going to log in your session, just as we talked about before in session. So we're now using that session code to give ourselves a session, and, and we're going to turn that logged in to true, which in PHP we have as any access to the pages that we need to navigate around, as long as the login is equal to true. So it's checking login. If login is true, then it lets you into the next page. And here below we have the logout method just as we did in the sessions code we talked about previously in other videos. So what I want to do now, let's go ahead and run the code and see if it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically create a login class, and we'll give it the handler my login is. And we're going to create an array with the username and password in it. We're going to try tiny dog and lively. And you should recall from the last video or a few videos ago that that was the username and password for my system. And then I'm actually going to run that in the found user. So I'm going to put that array in the found user. I'm going to run it and see if I'm authenticated. So let's run the program. So when I run the program, I get a message back saying that I was connected to the database but I was not logged in. So it logged me in and says, hey, you're logged in now. Now let's try a password that doesn't match what's in our database. So we'll just go, hey, lively DDD. And let's uh, save that and run that and see what happens. And it says, hey, I was connected to the database. And I was already logged in. But hey, guess what? My username was not found try a new password. So I'm not in the system anymore. And that's how it works. The code's just that simple and I'm just going to provide it for you as uh, basically boilerplate for you to do something with it. It is a combination of the session and the user uh, classes. So if you come along here and scroll up you'll see the authentication but along with that all the other user uh, methods as well. Delete user, um, user update info, uh, set info, and find all. Uh, this is really nice code, uh, and it's actually very easy. And I've done a little bit more scoping here. So these are private. This is public. This is a private connection, and this is a private results array. And methods that I need to be private, I kept private. And methods I need to be uh, public, I kept public. So once again, pay attention to your scoping. And uh, so what did we learn in this lesson today? We learned a little bit about things you should watch out when you're basically building new code that's never been built before. Uh, you definitely want to watch out for Flash Builder in a sense that that code could be decompiled where maybe PHP could not be seen. Uh, when you're starting to use globals such as sessions, uh, be aware that they may not have the same functionality in a new program like Flash Builder as they do in PHP. But also don't be afraid to try those as well. But before you release something commercially, make sure you know how it works and how it's going to function and check out its vulnerabilities. We then took you to uh, uh, PHP Eclipse. And we built a simple password system, uh, very easy, uh, based upon uh, the session class and the user class. And so what the system actually does is not only checks our login, but if we're confirmed in the login table or in the uh, database, we are also created a session that would allow us to do certain things if the session was turned on or not. So very nice uh, piece of code, and I hope you get some use out of it. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me on YouTube. I'll be glad to answer them for you. Hey, we're moving on. Next week, we're going to start uh, building Facebook applications. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.